Hi guys and welcome in the first day of our one week one bug challenge when we will really code, explain some things, deal with features and many other things. In this video we'll talk about the short term movement features. The goal is to highlight the features on the last candle, the last week, but really really close. Not to detect the market regime or the volatility because these two type of features are for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So for the data importation, you can find a lot of code that explain you how to do it. For those of you who are already in the AlphaCon program, you just have to check the chapter dedicated to this and you will be able to import candles, ticks. So it's not a problem for us. We do not have to deal with that. We need to go straight to the point now. But I just wanted to give you another code that will allow you to resample your data, okay? For example, I have imported all the one minute data from Pipperstone for the major currencies, the major cryptocurrencies, the indices. And now I want to resample this data to be sure that I will be able to handle them because in the one minute data, it's difficult to do a backtest or a walk forward optimization because we will have a lot of data. And to resample our data, we will use the code that I have shown you. You just have to run this cell and the code will be available below the video. And if you want to resample your one minute data into a 15 minute data, you just have to put 15 T because it follows the notation from Pandas. If you want a four hour, you put four hour. If you want a one day, you put one day, etc. Okay. And once you have put that and you press enter, you will have the new files in the folder that you specified there. So that was for the data. Now let's get straight to the point now for the features. Today, as I said, we'll talk about the short term movement features, the information about the last day, the last week, etc. I have six features to present you. So I will increase the speed because we have a lot of things to do. First of all, this folder there is from Obsidian. It's really interesting, it's 100% free. So I really recommend you to take a look about that because the folder that I will send you can be opened using your computer. You don't need to have Obsidian on your computer, but I really like because you can just switch from one file to another. You can put some links from one file to the others, you can have a graphical view about all the files and the relation between each file. So it's really interesting and you can do a lot of other things, but it's not an Obsidian tutorial, okay? Now we will just take a look about how I document my features. Generally, it's like a template. You will find always the same thing. First, a description, then the parameters of the function, the return of the function, and after that you have a small code, okay, the function that we will use to create these features and an example. And you have some notes, the limitation, etc. Here, the author, if you want to create your own features, you will not put my name, you will put yours to be sure that you know where these features come from. So the first features that we need to talk about is the autocorrelation. The autocorrelation is just a correlation. But instead of taking two variables, it will take the same variable, but at different time. For example, there, you can see the autocorrelation with 10 count days ago and now. So it means that we have a relationship between the price 10 count days ago and now. And it's very interesting because it means that sometimes the market is not at the equilibrium because in the equilibrium, you need to have a zero correlation between the past price and the current price. But as we can see there, it's not the case. So it can be a very interesting features to take into account. And there I have used the price, but you can use, for example, an indicator, you can use the returns, you can use whatever you want, because in the function, you have to put the data frame and the column. The column is just the name of a column to be sure that we can really create whatever you want. After that, you have the size of the rolling and needs to be greater than lag because if we have a data set with 50 data 
and we need to have a 60 period lag, obviously we will not have anything, okay? We'll only have non-values. So that's why we need to take a lag value smaller than the n. After that, it's really easy. First, we need always to make a copy of the data frame to be sure that we do not have any interferences with the first one and the last one, okay? It's quite important because sometimes you will have a lot of error message from Pandas if you don't do that, and it's really annoying. So for that, first, we will extract the column that you want to apply the autocorrelation. Then you do a rolling and you just do a lambda function with the autocore function from pandas, okay? It's quite easy. And then once you run that, you have your new column. And if I plot it, we can see that the value vary from minus 0 0.75 to 0 0.95, okay? So it's a good feature because we can see that there is a lot of variation, okay? And a lot of variation means a lot of information for our machine learning models when we will want to extract some patterns. The second set of features that we will look about is the candle information. It's pretty obvious. First, you have the candle way. It's a positive candle, a green candle, or a negative candle, a red candle. Then you have the filling percentage. How much the body fill the entire candle with the wicks, okay? If you have, for example, 0 0.5, it means that the body fill the half of the whole candle. If you have one, it means that there are no wicks. The body fill the entire candle. And if you have zero, it means that the open price is equal to the close price and it will look like a doji. And for the amplitude, is just the close price minus the open price divided by the average of the open price and the close price. If I run this, I will have my three new columns, the candle way, the filling, and the amplitude. And I can plot also the amplitude, the filling, the candle way to allow you to see that also we have a lot of variation and it's really good for us. The next one is the comma. And just a little parenthesis, all that I'm showing you is available on the folder, on the first folder, okay? If you go there, you will see a description for each features. It's quite important because if you want to share your work, if you want to just take a look about what you did six months ago, trust me, I already did the error. You need to have a documentation. It takes some time. It's it's true, but it's really, really important. And on this folder, you can see also all the code, okay? If you go in features, you will not see them now in the Obsidian uh, framework, but if you open this folder with Jupyter Notebook, you will see all the different notebooks, okay? If I go there in code features, you can see all the different features. So let's come back on the camera function. I created it using TA, Technical Analysis Library. But why I'm choosing to use a comma instead of a SMA? And the reason is pretty obvious. As you can see there on the graph, when you have a comma, it will be closer to the price. And when you have a big variation, the comma will adjust itself very, very soon instead of an SMA. So it means that the comma is taken more into account the market condition or the big movement, okay? And if the market is ranging, will be a flat curve. And it's also very interesting because it will help our algorithm to say, okay, now we are ranging, okay? So it's a quite a good feature that I really like. And it comes from a Medium article of Sofian Kabar, which is one of the most algorithmic trader with the new technical indicators, okay? The function is pretty simple to understand. If you have any problems, just check about the documentation of the TA library. And for the utilization, it's really, really understandable. So the only thing that you need to know is I prefer the Kama because it adjusts itself sooner than an SMA. Then I have created some lock features, especially 
the log price and the log return. The log return can be better than standard returns because they have more statistical information, okay? So no need to go further there, a log function and a percentage function. Then you have the mathematical derivative. The mathematical derivative is to find the velocity or the acceleration of the price. If you look about the first derivative, it will allow you to understand if the price is going up or going down, okay? It's like a percentage of variation. It's not exactly that, but in the ID is that. And the acceleration is the derivative of the first derivative. If the variation of the variation is positive, it means that the price is going up with more and more speed. But if the acceleration is negative, and the velocity is positive, it means that the price is going up, but with a smaller impulsion, okay? That's why we compute both, because both can give us some interesting variation, okay? If you're not comfortable with derivatives, I really advise you to check on Wikipedia or on YouTube a small tutorial. It's really, really easy to understand. In two worlds, the first derivative will allow us to understand if the price is going up or going down. And the second derivative will allow us to understand the strength of this variation. And to use it, it's pretty, pretty obvious. You use the same syntax as above and you can plot the result. And the last features that we need to talk about is the spread. It's very obvious. You just do the difference between the high price and the low price. And it is the spread. It will allow us to understand the volatility of the candle. But I put it into the short term features because it's really for the last candle only. So it's really a short term indicator. So that's all what we needed to see about this video. On the note of today, I just put a very interesting article that you can look about because I found it very, very interesting. And don't forget that you can find all that I've shown you in the description below. And tomorrow, we'll see how to create very interesting features to model the volatility of the market.